Okay, Kevin. Uh, part two, frequently asked questions, product upsell in three, two. We're going to start part two of the frequently asked questions on methylene blue. Um, and one, one of the questions that I'm really probably asked the most is, how do I get it? Um, where do I get it? Can, can I get it without a prescription? Um, we originally were going to compound methylene blue. Um, we were a little bit concerned because of the staining capabilities um, and the staining of our equipment in the lab, the cost associated with that, um, not only with the raw materials, but with the cleanup. And we actually did it, did, did it for a very, very short period of time. Um, our team was very concerned because of the sophisticated air handling system that we have of staining our filters and our filtration system. So we really backed away from compounding it. Um, luckily, I found a company that makes an over-the-counter product. Um, I vetted them very heavily because I needed to trust who they were. And they have, these are two of their products. One's called NeuroPro Plus. It's probably, well, I know it's, it's the most popular product that we have. Um, these are tablets and they're really, really easy to use. They're a scored tablet. So they're super, super easy to dose. Um, but we help with all of that, how to break the tablets, how to take them. There is a brain, frog product, brain fog product, which is a liquid. And then we're gonna teach you how to do that to avoid staining of the teeth. And again, these are classified as over-the-counter products. So if we were compounding it, we might be able to help service patients' needs in the 10 or 11 states that we're licensed in um, with an over-the-counter product, we're able to provide that service most any place. Um, if, you, if you have questions and you want to reach out, that's the thing to do because we can we can send this to you um, and follow up with, with uh, questions and instructions that you might have. Um, how should methylene blue be administered? Well, I think it's orally. Um, we've had some calls from some prescribers about using it rectally, um, but again, that would be a compounded prescription and we're just really concerned about um, the staining of our equipment and our molds and, and that kind of thing. Um, and I really haven't found the science to show that that's really the best delivery system. Um, it may be in a patient who has advanced cognitive function and is adverse to swallowing a tablet. Um, it, it, it may be a viable treatment, but at this time we don't have any experience with that. So I think the best way to do it is, it is tablets or even the liquid. Now the liquid needs to be diluted um, in a pretty good sized glass of water and then that's gonna dilute the, the methylene blue and you're gonna get less staining. Um, one of the risks, as I mentioned earlier, is staining of the teeth and gums. Um, I think the tablets is the way to go. The company that developed this, they put vitamin C in with it Vitamin C is shown to enhance the efficiency of the methylene blue on how it affects the mitochondria. So instead of selling a, a, another product, they actually put it together. It doesn't take much vitamin C, so there's enough in a tablet. And with the tablets being scored, they're 15 milligrams, and they can be broken so you can take as little as seven and a half or a quarter of them for as little as 3.125 milligrams. Um, 3.25 milligrams. Um, can methylene blue be used in combination with other treatments? Uh, I think it usually is. Uh, we do a lot of low-dose naltrexone out of our compounding lab, and we are seeing methylene blue and low-dose naltrexone or LDN being used in combination. They have different mechanisms of action, but they also have some of the same outcomes. LDNs being used for things like long COVID, for things like depression, for pain, for autoimmune diseases, immune function, some of the same things that methylene blue helps, but they're different, they work differently. So the combination of them, we sometimes see what's called a synergistic effect. For, so the two used together just work really well together. So the answer to can they be used in combination with other treatments is a resounding yes. What's the typical dosage and duration of treatment with methylene blue? Um, again, that's patient specific. Um, I like to visit with the population to see what goals they're looking for, what kind of dosing, are they doing any other medications? Do we need to start lower than normal? Um, what are their, 
and in that goals, um, how important is it that we reach that goal? One of the really cool things about methylene blue is it works pretty quick. LDN takes a long time to work. Methylene blue works pretty quick. So it, it, it helps the efficiency of the mitochondria work pretty rapidly. So we might be able to start at a low dose, but increase the dose with a little more rapidity than we normally would with some other things. Um, but a typical dose is patient driven. Um, we're gonna start low. We're gonna look for a positive outcome. We're gonna recommend that patients stop when they see an improvement. Um, and when that tends to plateau or they regress, then we'll start increasing it again. Most people we're seeing are using anywhere from one of the tablets. And I think the most I've seen anybody take is three. Um, that's been a couple larger men. So they do take a little bit more. Um, it takes a little bit more for it to be effective because there's some dosage ranges uh, according to weight. Um, but again, that's all something that I or my staff can really, really help you with. How does methylene blue compare to other treatments for the same conditions that we've been talking about? Um, I think it's really something very, very unique in the marketplace. Again, we're talking about something that was considered an industrial dye to almost a medical revolution. I've seen some remarkable results in the people that have committed to it, and this is all really pretty new. Um, so it is being used for a lot of the other conditions that other medications are being used for. Um, we talked about some of the medications that you have to be cautious with, but for the most part, I think it can be used with a lot of other things. I think people with neurodegenerative diseases have all sorts of things that they do to improve their movement, improve their strength. Um, and there's nothing in methylene blue that's gonna prohibit that, those physical therapies from um, giving, giving you better, better outcomes. Um, and again, I addressed this early on, but again one, again, one of the most common questions we do get is about its availability. Um, and it is available without a prescription um, from a company called 365 Labs. And again, I vetted them very, very extensively. The interesting thing about my conversation with them, and I, I studied and researched them for about 40 days before I made the decision to carry their product is the third party lab testing that they were able to provide me. And the great, great thing was the lab they were using is the same lab that one of the labs that we use out of our compounding lab to test our finished compounded products for potency and stability. So I knew the company, um, actually, actually knew, um, was familiar with the owner and one of the lead scientists. Um, so I made contact with them and they assured me that the company that I had identified as a source for methylene blue was um, a really, really good decision. So we did that, we have it, um, we move a fair amount of it um, if you're interested, I would encourage you to call us at Dakota Pharmacy. Um, most of my staff can help you. If not, please ask for me um, and I'll do my best to help you and I hope I can help.